All right, so hey guys, welcome back to Edge 3D CGI, and this is part three of the Cartoon House modeling series. So in this part, we're gonna go ahead and create the uh, backside of this door, so we can go ahead and apply a different color shader than we do to the house. And then we're gonna go ahead and create the window for the top half, and also we're gonna and go ahead and duplicate them on the sides as well. So let's go ahead and create this um, back plane for the door. And it's gonna be uh, very simple. We're just gonna go ahead and go into our front view. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my wireframe mode just so I can see my house better. And then we're gonna go ahead and create a plane. Okay, and because I have um, interactive creation turned off, it will go ahead and create it there. Now, as you notice, probably for you it might be different, but for me, uh, it goes ahead and creates it with loads of subdivisions. So again, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go into a channel box, okay, so control A, and then go into my inputs of polyplane one, and as you can see, subdivision width and height is all the way up on 10, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down to um, one for now. So once we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this, okay, so press E, rotate it a little bit, and then you can see it's rotate X in your channel box and type 19 there just so it's gonna be straight and then go back into our front view. So once we have that, I'm gonna roughly move it into a right position and again, go into my perspective mode and push it back a little bit just so it's, in, it's um, inside of our door frame. Okay, so roughly there will do. Go back into my front view and then we're gonna go ahead and start um, moving this around. So the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is scale this. Okay, so it's inside a door frame. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and move it just in the center. So now what we could do, we could go ahead and add in extra divisions, or we could just go ahead and simply extrude this edge up and then scale it around. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear off my edit mesh panel. Go ahead and hit extrude, um, drag this up. Okay, and right there you see it starts going outside um, outside of frame, so I'm gonna press scale, scale it in, okay, until it's inside my frame, and we can go ahead and turn on X-ray just so we see how far, um, where this frame is sitting inside. So the X-ray button is right up here. Let's go ahead and extrude this guy one more time, okay, so I'm just gonna drag this up, and then again, press R on my keyboard to go ahead and scale it, and let's go ahead and do that one more time. Okay, and there we go. So now we got this back plane for our door. And what this means basically is that we can just go ahead and apply a different sort of shader to um, this plane than we do to the rest of the house. Okay, so that's the only reason why we are doing it. So once we created all these objects, now what we're gonna go ahead and uh, I'll introduce you guys to the outliner. And it's a very good way of keeping track of all your objects and what's in your scene. And now that we're gonna start grouping things together, um, it's a good way of uh, introducing you guys to this, okay? So the outline is right on the left-hand side here. You can go ahead and click this little icon and it will pop up on the left-hand side. Or you can also go to Window and Outliner and it will pop up, okay? So now as you can see, every time we create an object in our scene or a camera or a light or whatsoever, whatever is in our scene, it will go ahead and show up here. Now it's a very good idea to um, keep track of all these objects and rename them because once you have um, uh, a model that's made out of hundreds of different parts, um, it's gonna be a good idea to go ahead and name them all so you know what each part is and it will make your life a lot easier later down the road. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna start renaming, the, renaming these, sorry. So I'm gonna double click that and I'm gonna go ahead and name that our house base. Okay, so what's this, polypipe one. This is gonna be our door frame. This guy's gonna be just door detail one. Okay, door detail two, and you can name them whatever you want as long as you know what um, they are gonna be. So this is gonna be my door handle, and this is gonna be my door back, back plane, okay. 
So what we can now do is that we can go ahead and group this together if you want it to and have it as a group of objects. But because we can go ahead and duplicate this um, to create our windows as well, what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna go ahead and select this back plane and the door frame and we're only gonna go ahead and create um, group these two guys together. So let's go ahead and press Control G on our keyboard to go ahead and group them together. And as you can see, our pivot will go ahead and move. And also, when you go ahead and select this group, it will go ahead and select both of your objects. Now, one thing that you should be very careful with is that now if you go ahead and select an object that's in your scene by the viewport, so I select this, as you can see, it will not select the group but it will only select the part inside the group so now if you go ahead and move this around as you can see the whole group is not going to move only that part okay whereas if i select the whole group and i move that as you can see the whole group will go ahead and move now you can also go ahead and do this um, if your outline is closed but you know that this is um, grouped together you can go ahead and select an object that's, that you know is in a group and then you can go ahead and press the up key on your keyboard, so the up arrow and it will go ahead, go up in the hierarchy and select the group node, okay? So you can just go ahead and select an object, press the up key on your keyboard and it will go ahead and select the group. So let's go ahead and have our outliner open and we're also going to go ahead and as you can see our pivot that now we group this object together, as you can see our pivot is now in the center of the world. And we want it to be in the center of the object. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and center the pivot for this object. And there are different ways that you can go and do this. You can go to modify, okay, and then go to center pivot, and it will do just that. Or you can go to hold down the space bar on your keyboard, go to modify and center pivot. Okay, it doesn't really matter whichever is more comfortable for you. Okay, so once we have this, we're gonna go ahead and start duplicating this around and moving the bits around to go ahead and give us our top um, frame. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and name this door frame. Okay, let's get in put on the end that it's a group, okay, so I'm going to select there, press the up key to go ahead and select the whole group, and press Control D to go ahead and duplicate this object, okay, and as you can see there's a second object that we just duplicated. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and scale things around to go ahead and give us our um, window, so let's go ahead and scale this down and then scale it in the center. Okay, let's go ahead and move this back around to the top. Okay, that's great. So now let's go ahead and move uh, the bottom half of this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and unsmooth this and then go to vertex mode. Now I'm gonna select all of those bottom vertices and move them up, okay? And then once this guy is close to that edge, I'm gonna go ahead and select all these bottom vertices and move this up as well. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing with the plane. So I'll just select the bottom vertices of the plane and move that up. Okay, and it's still a bit too wide for me. So I'm going to go ahead and select the whole group. Okay, and then just going to go ahead and scale it down this way, maybe a little bit that way to give us our window frame. Okay, so it looks great. Let's go ahead and push this back in a little bit further and now my plane is not showing so I'm just going to go into my group node select that frame and go ahead and drag that out back plane that's the one that I need there we go okay so our window frame is created now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and just add uh, I'm going to go ahead and add in a bar in the center and it should be very simple for us to go ahead and do so I'm just again I'm gonna go ahead and create a cube go ahead and scale it roughly the right size so scale it all the way down and then up like so then let's go ahead 
and move this into right position. Okay. So roughly there should do. Let's go ahead and grab these bottom vertices and drag them down. Do the same thing on the top. Okay, and it looks like it's a bit too wide. So I'm gonna also, um, before we go ahead, let's go ahead and push this in. So I'm just gonna press F to go ahead and zoom in. Okay, so I'm gonna push this inside the frame Go into my front view and let's go ahead and scale it down this way just to make this a little bit thinner. Okay. So once we have that, I'm going to go ahead and isolate. So I can go ahead and easily add in the supporting edges that this guy needs. So we're going to go ahead and add one on the bottom, one on the top. Okay. And then one on each side. And do the same thing here. And again, we know that because this is a long face, we know that this supporting edge will move down quite a lot. Okay, so as you can see, I will move all the way down there. So let's go ahead and just add in two more. So go to Insert Edge Loop Tool Options, make sure that it's multiple edge loops and set two. Okay, and I'm just gonna go ahead and scale this up to move it further up a little bit. Okay, so that looks a lot better. Let's go ahead and come out of isolate. And there's our door. I'm in the window frame created. So what we're gonna go ahead and do next is now that um, this object is gonna be our window and we know that this is finished, we're gonna go ahead and group this in there as well. And you can do this again many different ways. You can go into your outliner, middle mouse button and drag this object into the group. Okay. And as you can see, it will go ahead and put it into the group. Let's go ahead and name this as well. Window middle bar. Okay. And again, this is not a door anymore. So you can go ahead and rename these to be a, a window. I'm just going to go ahead and select that so I don't have to write it down again and then just copy and paste it and rename rename our group as well okay so now we have a group for our window as well so now we can go ahead and just duplicate this um, around but before we go ahead and do that we're just going to go ahead and add uh, extra detail on the bottom here so it's, it should be a lot easier for us to just go ahead and duplicate this guy and move bits around. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, this is a pretty good way of speeding up your workflow whenever you can cheat as much as you can by duplicating mesh that you already made instead of keep creating new primitives. Okay. So I just duplicated that guy. Go into my front view. Okay, and I know I want it roughly there, and I'm just going to go ahead and select these verts, drag them out, and I'm going to go ahead and push these bottom two down and go ahead and create this sort of shape. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and push this in a little bit more, and we should really go ahead and add in some support and edges here. So, two, and I can go ahead and oops. Let's go ahead and select them two loops. And as you can see, because um, this is at an angle, it's not gonna move it properly. So in this case, we should use our slide edge tool. So we can select the edge loop and then go to your slide edge tool and middle mouse button drag. And as you can see that way, it's not gonna go ahead and change anything. Okay. So again, I'll do the same thing with the other one. Oops, too much. Okay, that should do the trick. Let's come out of isolate, turn off x-ray just to see how our object is looking. Just gonna go ahead and drag this out a little bit more. Push it up somewhere there. Okay, so that should do. Let's go ahead and uh, rename this guy again. So rename this to be our window detail 
or window bottom. And then we're going to go ahead and again pop this guy into the window group so we can just go ahead and easily duplicate this. So let's go ahead and add in the windows for the right um, side as well. Let's go ahead and duplicate this, control D. Okay. <clears throat> and now let's go ahead and rotate. So I'm dragging on the green axis. And then I'm going to go ahead and type 90 in there. Okay. We can go into our front view. Select the whole group. And then let's go ahead and try to push this into the side. Okay, so it should sit roughly in there. We just go, go ahead and line it up over here. Okay, so once we have our first one, I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this one more time and move it across to the other side. I'm just going to push it out a little bit more. Same with this. Okay. And there's our windows for the sides created. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do next is we're going to go ahead and create the windows on the other side as well. And again, we could do the same thing. If we go ahead and select this group, duplicate it, rotate it, and put it on the other side. Or we can do it a different way, which is a little bit faster. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and select this group and select that group. Okay, so select both of them, both of our windows. And then I'm going to go ahead and group these two together and quickly name it Windows Site. Okay, so once I have that, notice that my pivot goes back into the center of our grid. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and duplicate this and we can go ahead and scale this in the X minus one. And the reason why it's X is because it's in this direction and you can tell that by this is the red little arrow. And if you have a look on the bottom left on your screen, you can see that that's saying X. So we can go ahead and select our scale tool. So press R and then up here, you can go ahead and type in minus one in the X and it will go ahead and scale it in minus one X. Or you can simply just put a minus sign in front of X. And this is actually very important because if you go ahead and scale this around, uh, your X is not going to be minus one anymore. It's going to be minus 1.5 or something. So if it's, let's say X 1.5, and you go ahead and scale this in minus one to flip it onto the other side, it will go ahead and look really weird and it's not gonna go ahead and scale it properly. But in this case, our X is one. So we can just go ahead and put a minus sign in front of the X and hit enter. And as you can see, it will go ahead and flip it to the other side. Okay, now in this case, because our um, mesh is not exactly lined up with the center. Um, it's not exactly at the right place, but then we can just go ahead and press W to go ahead and push this back in. Okay, where it's supposed to be and this way it's a lot faster. Okay, so now we created our windows. We have our door. We have our top window created as well. And in the next part, we're going to go ahead and create the roof for our house and then go ahead and create all the tiles that go on the top and the extra bits and bobs, okay? So I hope you guys have been enjoying the series so far. Make sure you go ahead and like the series, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next part.